Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. All right, guys. So it's um, <laughs> been an interesting 24 hours, I yeah. would say. There's been lots of stuff going on. I saw Mr. MBB was covering what we were covering yesterday, this morning. Um, and this is one of the two anomalies that we noticed yesterday. And what is it showing? It's showing the water uh, just change insanely uh, on this one particular buoy that was over the coast, over in the Pacific side coast of South America off the coast of Chile. And as you can see, it's going from about, I would say, 4,100 meters down to about 22,100 meters. Hmm. 4,100 meters down to 2,100-ish meters. That's a massive drop. It, it really is massive. Uh, it's huge, and it hopefully was just a glitch, and there's nothing else involved. This buoy is not in event mode at the moment. It was in event mode. It's no longer in the event mode. But you can see it's recording this event and then picking up again at normal height. There is a little gap there. So was there just a signal drop? Is that all this was? Now, if this was the only thing, I wouldn't have paid too much attention to it. And also, you know, we had, and I want to double check here. All right, we look okay. Mm -hmm. Because we got cut off at the end of our video, and I I didn't see that we were cut off, and you know it was it was interesting because about three or four minutes of of talking was totally cut off, and the interesting part was I noticed the video length, and it was like seventeen minutes, uh, and then when it got uploaded, it was thirteen minutes, and <clears throat> if I could only remember exactly what it was. So, you know, it, it was very curious that they didn't like us talking about these two events, and we're going to touch on the other one, but I want to kind of preface it beforehand. Yeah, I know, and I mean, to to make the video cut off, it's not an easy task. You have to, like, go out of your way to hit the button to make it stop recording, and then a lot of times we have to hit it two or three times, so it's just, it's not easy for for the recording to stop. I mean, every time we're done with the video, it's kind of kind of silly here because, you know, we have to just sit here and not breathe for a minute while Mike hits the control button to make sure it's done recording. So, I mean, that was deliberate. It, <clears throat> it was deliberate, and we also had uh, in a previous video, the previous day, we had the power in the house blink off three times. Yeah. <clears throat> During the video, three times the power blinked off when I was trying to start talking about a certain subject. It's it the the, the power was going out and it just was qu really quick. Again, the control system is far more vast than most people uh, have even a clue of. You guys do, our, our regulars do. You've been with us. Many of you have been with us for over five years. Some the full seven years. And you've <laughs> gone through all these anomalies with us throughout time. So what was really interesting about the other anomaly, which we're going to show in a second, was that Cindy started to get imp impressions of Atlantis and, and impressions that this could actually be some of the technology that was used in the end of the kingdom of Atlantis. Now, Atlantis, and the dogs are a little wound up because uh, it's early morning. So 230 pounds of dog playing in the, in the room here. Um, Atlantis is just a fascinating subject. And many people have covered this in, in real depth and in real detail. What makes it different with us and what we cover uh, is that we, we're not just quoting Plato. We're not just going over uh, the same stories. Uh, we're, we're actually remote viewing and we're also getting messages from our guides about this. And Atlantis, the way they picture it, as far as if you, if you start talking to some actual historians in the system, 
they're going to picture it more like, well, it was probably an island empire. It was probably an island in the Mediterranean, or, or maybe it was just outside the Pillar of Hercules, like, you know, Plato said, but it was an island and it went down and et cetera, et cetera. The reality of Atlantis is far different um, than what they really, really paint. And, and some will say, well, the Reichshat uh, structure over in the Sahara, the Eye of the Sahara, that's Atlantis. So Atlantis was in uh, Africa. Well, Atlantis was all over the world. It was a global society. This is the reveal. It was a global society in which extraterrestrials came and went all the time. This is really... Um, when we see the pictures in, in from the Vedic world, from the stories of the Mahabharata and the Ramayana and the Wars of the Gods, when we think about the time of the Aesir and the Vanir, uh, the Tuatha de Dan and all these different beings that at, had different levels of technology, we, we are talking about uh, Atlantis and then right after the fall of Atlantis. Atlantis fell for for different reasons, but you know this isn't going deeply into that. It's really ultimately the control system that took it down because they couldn't have such an advanced civilization on a planet that they just wanted to utilize in a very very fundamental, rudimentary way. They they couldn't have beings with the type of technology and also the understanding of the fact that the universe is populated <laughs> with beings all over. Life is abundant. There's many different societies out there. There are other planets out there that we're not allowed to see that they block out in the sky. And there's other very advanced uh, civilizations on in the earth as well as under the oceans. They can't have us knowing it because we're kind of like we're like that that herd that's owned by the mean mean rancher who doesn't treat them well who abuses them who just looks at them like just simply objects you know this is this is really the case even though there's advanced civilizations that are right next to us and beings that would love for the the they'd love to help us out and they do in little ways that they're allowed to uh, they do feel very bad for humanity and they want to see humanity rise up and out. And in fact, we're, we're going to be doing a video possibly with uh, a guest speaker uh, talking about just that because a lot of people are getting the message that this, this time uh, with their dominant control is just about over as far as complete dominant control. It's going to take a while to push the system away so to speak and there are going to be many that are going to go with the system and decide to stay in the system which sounds absolutely insane yet it's going to be their choice and just as there were choices that were made in 2020 that many people completely regret now if they only knew well this is what we're trying to do is to you know awaken those that don't know the fall of Atlantis was completely different than what they are telling you in the history books no it, it was a very very advanced society and again it was one in which we knew we saw extraterrestrial beings coming and going all the time that was just common knowledge you know i'm looking at this and um looking at the other picture if i get the right one going back to here now i don't i don't know the measurements of this thing um, but, but you got to wonder. And, and when I was, uh, when, when that information had come up about Atlantis, it's curious because when I was rem remote viewing it and looking at it, I was trying to figure out, okay, uh, this is what I'm looking at. How do I explain to people in a logical way what, what I'm seeing? And, and it wasn't very easy. And the Atlantis didn't come up or it didn't come through for like an hour later. And usually when you're looking at information and you're not getting it instantly, there's a block there. There's a deliberate placed block of information that you're not allowed to see. So the controllers that we deal with, they do know how to put blocks of 
blocking, they know how to block information from people who can see because they know that seeing is, uh, it, it's the people who can see that's not their friend, that's not going to help them continue to accomplish their goals. Now, when I was looking at that, uh, looking at that thing, um, it's, it's called the Reichshat structure and it's 25 miles across. So, so I'm looking at it and I'm seeing there's information going <clears throat> toward inner earth it's not inner earth but it's going toward inner earth and there's information above and it's like they were o opening these do doors they're opening like a glass dome a, a dome they're opening something they're making adjustments they're changing this thing and it really caused a huge rift in the water it felt like it could have really caused a lot of problems and now i'm not saying that everything is okay now because the it, they had anunnaki fingerprints all over it it felt like it could really create a catastrophe if something had gone wrong with what they were doing you know i i, I see this as wild as it sounds this this bubble of glass is being moved it's being changed and this, these are parts of Earth that we're not familiar with as far as them being populated. But there are. There are cities under Earth. And, and it feels like there were changes made. There were technologies that were put into place. There were things that were done. And it, it doesn't feel positive. Now, something could have gone wrong. And, and they might still have something going on where we could get waves we could get weather we could get vortexes we could get uh portals coming open above that area still so i don't think it's completely out of 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 i don't think everything is fine just yet i think they're still making adjustments they could make adjustments i also see are you speaking yeah, so technology. This, this. Yeah, okay. Yes, I also see. So she's she's talking about this anomaly that we're yeah. looking at at the moment, which just to clarify, <clears throat> up in here, <laughs> this is where that Reichshat structure is. It's up in the Sahara. Um, so it's interesting that this was kind of heading up in that direction too. Uh, it's curious, just curious. It is curious, uh, uh, you know, looking at that, com comparing the two and, and feeling that there's something there, something going on. But I also feel that there's technology in the sky and there's technology down in the ground in the ocean. So, I mean, this is a really, really big deal. And, and I don't think that anyone should should be tinkering with it and i don't think what was going on was completely safe for humanity but maybe it wasn't supposed to be maybe it was set up to really cause a huge problem now there are a lot of people who are just going to dismiss this website and make up things like oh this is just no big deal of course they're going to do that because this information could really screw with the controllers continuing to have control. I, I know that there's people out there who want to belittle this or just write it off as a technical glitch. This is not a technical glitch. This is something that's very real and could have been a catastrophe, but maybe that's what they wanted. I, I don't know. So to clarify again, you're seeing a correlation, and she was seeing this yesterday before I pulled up pictures of the Reichshat structure. Um, she's seeing a cor correlation between this technology, which as we go, uh, it does move up in the, in the direction of the uh, eye of the Sahara. So she's seeing a correlation between that and the destruction of Atlantis. And again, are, are we currently living in another incarnation of Atlantis that is about to go through the same sort of cataclysms? You know, one thing that hit me when we were looking at this <clears throat> is Antarctica. Because when you look, see all these signals, they're emanating and pushing up and they're coming in this direction. They're pushing this anomaly, whatever this anomaly is, 
up in that direction. They are originating from Antarctica. In specific, where in, in Antarctica is this particular area? This is what's called New Schwabenland. I kid you not, this is New Schwabenland. And you might say, well, what's significant about that? Well, Schwabenland was the name of the ship with the first Nazi expedition to Antarctica in search of, they say, whale blubber. Uh, yeah, whale oil. Uh, no, it was a lot more than that because this is all directed by uh, the extraterrestrials and the inner Earth beings. And again, there are so many different beings involved in this. When we did do the channeling, uh, over on Patreon, the Galactic Federation was saying you've heard stories that you, your bodies were created uh, by the Anunnaki, and this is not true. It is, it, there were many different ET races uh, that were here, and there were different uh, e extraterrestrials that took part in even that, the creation of Homo sapiens, and there's been many other Denisovans and Neanderthals, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Australopithecus. I mean, it goes on and on and on. All the different sorts of species that have been on the planet. Some of those are ET. <laughs> uh, you know, again, ultimately they're all ET because you know the Earth has been used as a place for refugees and migrants, and the irony of it is so has Nibiru. That was what Nibiru was. It was again a refugee home for, for migrants and immigrants escaping this galactic war that's ongoing. And this war has wiped out entire planets. It's wiped out entire uh, suns, uh, at least in the 3D sense, because you know when you wipe out something in the 3D, it doesn't mean it's gone in entirety. It just means the 3D shell is gone, because ultimately we are all interdimensional beings that are residing on higher frequencies and higher densities. And I understand that this is a lot to swallow for some that are indoctrinated into uh, the lies of the system, because they are lies and. You know, yet we, we will find things like the um, flat earthers and stuff that realize there's something really big about Antarctica. And they're right, because there is something really big about Antarctica. It's, it's, it's not what it's made out to be. Why do these leaders always go to Antarctica? It's because this is really the, the prime uh, Anunnaki base uh, of control. And this is where the signal was uh, originating from. And specifically, it was coming from New Schwabenland. Now, Antarctica, we're thought that it's so dang freezing. These guys don't look cold at all, even though this looks like snow. But again, Germany gets pretty cold, right? And, you know, you do acclimate but I don't think this it's as cold as what they say because, I mean, he's got his sleeves rolled up. They're not wearing gloves. They're not wearing parkas. You no, know, I mean, to me, the impression would be this might be one of those days where the sun's out and maybe it's 40 degrees, but you have a good snow cover. And, uh, you know, you don't feel bad. It feels kind of nice, right? Uh, that's what it feels like. And, and either that or, you know, these guys are not really in Antarctica. They're on a movie set. Now, in these times, we, we, we can't really <laughs> discount any of that. But it's, it's known, again, this is what Hitler did. And why? Well, part of what he was doing was he was, he was following the guidance of those, that, again, we call the Anunnaki. And, you know, there were contacts made. They used the grays mostly. There are short grays. There are really tall grays. Um, me and my family have had encounters with all of the above. And again, so many others had, have too, as they are usually monitoring those uh, that, that may be an issue for the paradigm that they give humanity. But here you go. I mean, this goes all the way back in the summer of 36. Hitler had completed a four-year plan to boost the German military and domestic economy. And so, you know, they, they went around the world. Now, this is, they're talking about just getting resources. They went around the world looking for 
things like the spear of Longinus and you know uh, the the Holy Grail and all sorts of relics and artifacts that uh, would carry what you might call a cult power and ability in reality you know they were connecting to the real power grid and they were following its instructions this is that area and this is exactly where that signal was coming from new swabia absolutely and you know again this is the real base of control operation paperclip is real you know the nazis didn't lose they moved to america yes they also moved into the soviet union too some of the scientists and Werner von braun actually he he was the head of nasa i mean you don't get any higher than that you know as you see these other gentlemen too arthur rudolph and herman ober there were many of them taken in and they became dominant, uh, prominent people. But the reality is, in some ways, Operation Paperclip is a cover story because in reality, the governments already know who is the boss. It, it's not that Grays came down and made a deal with Roosevelt or Truman or any of them. No, they, they've they always pulled the strings. Well, really, again, the Grays work for those that we call the Anunnaki who are under the control of that that we call the Draco which ultimately is under the control of the AI system that they created and that then enslaved them so you know this in some ways is a cover story yet it's real in that yeah they, they were taking into uh, our system and moved into positions of power even though they were working for the enemy. Now that also kind of gives you a clue. There's really only one control system here. And yes, bits and pieces of it can bicker and fight, but they're supposed to fight because this is part of the constant population control, constant war. And it also gives a reason for atrocities and a reason for a reason, mode, and method of covering up things that you don't want the public to know is really, really happening behind the scenes. In 1943, German Navy Grand Admiral Karl Donitz said, the German submarine fleet is proud to having built for the Fuhrer another, in another part of the world, a Shangri-La, an impenetrable fortress. Now that was from Robert Seffer's Gods with Amnesia. Um, very interesting too. There's a lot of cover stories out there and a lot of uh, disinformation. And so it's really important to develop that inner guidance. But yeah, absolutely. You could see the, the iron crosses all over this area and the years of their different expeditions. You know, uh, there's even the thought that Roswell was really uh, a Nazi uh, UFO. Went with the Battle of L.A. and the saucers over D.C. and ultimately with Operation High Jump. You know, it's again thought that these were really the Nazis and that the Nazis are over on Mars. Well, the reality is, yes, we, we've remote viewed and, and we've seen that there are humans working with very reptilian uh, aliens in Mars still mining Mars under the surface mm -hmm. um, you know the government's really that's their number one job is to be a cover story for everything that's that's going on um, and I do think that they're very busy creating cover stories now if you're wanting the truth so many times you you will have to get quiet and and go within and find that truth within yourself and that's something that Mike and I do, we do hundreds of hours of, of meditation mantras and we sit and we go within and we find this information. It's there for everyone, but the world that we live in creates so much chaos. Um, chaos can really disrupt the ability to, uh, to see, to see remote viewing. I mean, this world just keeps us going on, on like a it's 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 a rat race it, it's almost never ending and it's exhausting so i mean how many people do have the time to sit and do all of that not too many but that's deliberate because if we all could things would be a lot different if we could all sit and get quiet and go within and and find our truth yeah absolutely snowden documents uh talking about the u.s alien hitler link it's real absolutely of course it's real but it's also part of a disclosure because they do know at some point in time, hey, 
you know, they have to have the second coming, and the second coming is the second coming of the Anunnaki. That's the second coming. Yes, Yeshua was um, uh, what we would call an ascended master, a great teacher. And he came and, and taught about how much ability and, and co-creative power humans have. Again, uh, you know, kingdom of God is within you. That part's very, very true and accurate. I and the Father are one, but it doesn't mean just him and not us, all of us. Because, again, source is within us. There are so many things that are uh, just given as, uh, well, that's just a divine mystery. Uh, you better go ask the Pope. No. The Pope is pure evil, as is, you know, these people we see right now on, on the screen. They are the system. They are the system. You are behind enemy lines in a galactic war. This is a planet that is controlled by the adversaries uh, of humanity. And, and you find yourself behind enemy lines. This war is huge. Yet at the same time, the light is shining and they know they're not going to be able to hold on to this particular enclave completely. They're going to have to release at least a portion of it. And at the same time, uh, they are going to have to give a disclosure at some point in time. And, and they know their time is short on that. As the information we've gotten is, you know, they have three years at most. Um, and they may never come straight out and tell you exactly. I, they'll never tell you exactly because, you know, they can't say that you're, in a sense, prisoners of war here that are about to have a chance at getting released. Hello, they don't want you to know that. No, they want you to worship them. You know, so this is something much, much bigger and much, much bigger. The other side of this, that things that go on in wartime that never really, really get exposed until generations later are things like certain experiments. And if you look at the experiments that, that they were doing, uh, the NAZIs, on you know all sorts of, they had tons of subjects because they were all in camps. They were all prisoners of war. They were all, you know, the, as many people as they needed to, you know, utilize, they could. And so, you know, again, uh, just think about what we see today. It's all about genetically modifying things. It's always been about genetically modifying things so that they won't go run away. Can you create a herd that will just sit there docilely and yet give you everything you want to get from it? When you look to the abduction phenomenon, you'll find the same thing happens. You'll find that these beings are always checking our DNA. They're always checking for all sorts of different genetic markers. Why? Because it's all connected. It has always been all connected. There's so many books on this out there that will give you uh, a picture of this. And again, you know, for those that have only looked at uh, just Genesis 6 in the Bible, or they maybe they've discovered the book of Enoch and think they've figured it all out, you haven't even really begun yet. It's much, much bigger than that. It's huge. It, it's literally, it, it's more even than a galactic war. This is <laughs> uh, a multiverse war in a sense that it is something that has bled in from a totally different reality into ours. And it could be overwhelming uh, to, to really understand that. Genetic modification, the GMO foods, Boy, are they a tell because, again, humans have a second chromosome that has been fused, homo sapiens sapiens. In the abduction phenomenon, we see many people have seen beings in some sort of stasis, it just kept for what? And these are on ships, and, and Cindy herself has seen beings in stasis on ships, and now they're giving us all sorts of, you know, interesting and cute and sometimes a little ridiculous almost so that we can't take it seriously yet at the same time they're not confirming or denying ultimately they're just kind of leaving it out there and leaving you hanging but you don't have to be hanging it's very real this is the situation again you know you are on a planet that is controlled by enemy forces that have really really malevolent intent and yet, the planet is about to be liberated. And what is the liberating 
uh, energy. It's the energy that's coming from the sun and from the cosmos. And that's why they don't like the sun. They are truly like vampires. The sun is going to bring about genetic change that frees those humans that stay organic. I mean, I, I can't say that all abductions are horrible. They're not all horrible. But if you remember, they can obviously be very, very traumatic. And these traumas can interfere in your day-to-day -day life through phobias that you really don't understand or you don't know where they come from. I mean, sometimes they might come from past life, but sometimes they might come from an abduction and and it's really strange how they go about this because the body can remain where it is and then they take up another a, a, a different body a different layer of the body and then they work on that so i i mean there's just it, it it's so impossible to sit here and explain to those who who are not awake you, you just can't i mean if somebody is still in mainstream and watching CNN and you, you try to talk to them about this you know you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna possibly get yourself in trouble or reported in some way shape or form but I'm here to tell you that these things happen and and not all abductions are horrible no you really have to sit and go within and make that decision yourself because the trauma can can is obviously going to be there even if even if that changes that were made in your body even if they weren't for bad purposes, still, if you remember, it's it's not it's not a good thing to go through. No, absolutely. You know, so the system has surprised humanity uh, many, many times, and this is part of what we may be going through again. And I wanted to um, just ask Cindy if if I could ask her again to clarify when we were talking about um, the image on Vin Ventusky and we we're talking about like the Reichshat structure um, where was that there there's the, just, just that one yeah. there you go yeah. um, I, I you know because this is something we hadn't discussed previously because a lot of times when we go and we're getting information she starts channeling as we're making the the video so she gets clarification on on things that she's seen uh this energy whatever this is this energy like mr mbb was saying is this a ship the other channel um that that i originally seen and what was it into the light was into, it yeah, no into, I, I forgot into something Left a link I left a link on it and um, a really good vibe off the guy. He's, he seems really um, like he just wants to bring you guys interesting info and help uncover things. But just saying, is this some sort of ship? Can you imagine the size of the ship? But this is the thing that would blow your mind. There are motherships that big out there. There are there are motherships out there that are the size of large planets and bigger. Uh, again, we, we live on just a portion of what was Tiamat. It was a much bigger planet. Um, somebody else said um, something about mentioning mud fossils. Oh, yeah. I mean, Cindy and I have put our hands on them uh, in person. And we've discovered many of them over the years. There's tons of what you would call mud fossils in the American West and Southwest. And there's so many relics of this war over there at the same time so what she was picking up was that this uh, has something to do in effect with perhaps this the it's the same sort of energy and so i do anticipate and that they are going to create major events there's something really really there's a series of large events coming and we, we might think we've seen large events at up to this point, but we really haven't. We've we've really only <laughs> looked at, you know, fair to middle in at best, so to speak, um, compared to what's coming. And so uh, I'll just let her elaborate again. So you're saying this was caused by some sort of technology that was utilized um, below, both below and above the surface. 
Right. I mean, the 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 feeling of what whatever was sitting there sat there for a very long time. But there's also information deeper into the surface and above. And and when I when I look at the other object, the 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 information ties together in a way that I can't I can't fully explain. Um, but it's there. The information is is there and I do think it's deliberately kind of set up so that we can't bring about a lot of clarity so yeah that those two are tied um, we'll have to see what happens now this I feel absolutely could have been a ship sitting there for a very long time that at one point moved um, the the other structure that we're looking at now I feel a big structure where a lot of beings are living in the ocean that's what I feel and I feel that there was disruption to it or there was changes made to it and they waited for after the eclipse because the these beings know that they can make changes when the world is at a certain frequency they, they can they can make changes to um, whatever they're doing whatever they're living in I mean if you're if you're kind of looking into the Vedas you can see that they they made these giant ships depending on what the etheric realm was like so i do think we went through a change after the eclipse now we keep running into people that have some very very interesting information that's coming in just before the eclipse and after the eclipse and and we're going to do that one in an upcoming video because i find it to be very curious that a lot of people um, are tying into the same the same information so if you look on wiki they'll tell you this is a deeply eroded slightly elliptical dome and it's it's you know basically volcanic in origin but what they won't tell you is these conditions could be caused kind of anywhere with a certain technology that would go over this area and in fact trigger it from above using uh, some sort of energy to penetrate the ground and pull up that that volcanism to a point where you end up with the Sahara because there are maps and uh, Jimmy Corsetti um, bright insight I think as well as others have talked about you know these maps that are not too old I mean last 500 years and they show just forest and rivers in an area that there's nothing it's just nothing but sand now and in fact, there is a lot of evidence of massive, massive, huge tidal waves, like totally inundating all of northern uh, Africa. Massive. What could cause that? Well, there's technologies that could cause the volcanism and trigger this. This is exactly what...